Is it worth spending $400 more to get the M4 Pro or should you just get the regular M4? Well today we're going to do a lot of tests starting from benchmarks to real world productive tasks to see what kind of difference we get. Now I'm also starting off at 100% charge here and I'm going to go ahead and unplug both of these guys because we're also going to do a battery life comparison. Now I also want to point out that the M4 Pro now has a high power mode. Previously it was only the Mac ships that had it and that's going to help uh, kick up the cooling a bit more to maintain high performance. The M4 does not have that. And here are the full specs side by side and you'll notice that the M4 Pro comes with 24 gigs of RAM base. So not only do you get extra performance cores and graphics, you also get the extra RAM. Now the other difference I want to point out is that the port layout is the same, display support is the same this year, which is great, but we have Thunderbolt 5 ports on the M4 Pro, which are about three times faster, and that will only matter if you're going to hook up to brand new high power docks or very expensive SSDs that are not out yet. And now I want to show you guys the differences under the covers. As you guys could see, the M4 has a single fan compared to dual fans on the M4 Pro, and the actual heat block over the chip is way larger with larger heat pipes. So even though we have more performance, we could get better cooling and it could run quieter even though it is more powerful. The speakers are identical on both of these, which is good. And the batteries are also identical, which will also mean that the battery life will probably be a lot worse on the M4 Pro. And next I wanna compare the SSDs because both of these come with 512 gigabytes. But as you see, as this test is running, the M4 Pros is quite a bit faster. I let this saddle in for write speeds, the M4 Pro is 40% faster, and for read speeds, we have 5,000, that is 70% faster than the M4. Now, if you upgrade to one terabyte, well, the M4 Pro will get even faster because we're not just limited by the chips and you'll need that if you're gonna use Thunderbolt 5. And now getting into Geekbench 6, you guys can see we have slightly higher clock speeds, that higher RAM. I'm gonna go ahead and start running this. And of course, we have more cores. Even though this is the Bend model, you have more performance cores uh, compared to having more efficiency cores on the regular M4. We literally have double the performance cores, four compared to eight, which is crazy. We've never had that kind of difference before from the base chip and the one step up. But as you guys can see, those extra efficiency cores are putting in good work because if we look at the multi-core score, well, we have a difference about 36% here, still a big difference. And single core score, well, the M4 Pro is a little bit higher, but they are quite similar. Of course, that is general performance, so when you get into specifics, we we'll might see a bigger difference. And now let's take a look at the graphics for Metal Compute. And here we have 10 cores compared to 16. So that's a lot more. And holy moly, guys, that is almost double the graphics performance. Uh, with a lot of laptops, people spend an extra 400 bucks just to get extra graphics performance, maybe not even this much. So that is insane. And while we're on graphics, let's go ahead and test out the new Steel Nomad Light Unlimited mode from 3D Mark. This is more of a gaming workload. And here we have a difference of 65% in terms of frames per second. Of course, this is gaming, whereas previously it's compute and the extra bandwidth of the M4 Pro. And now let's go ahead and test out Solar Bay, which also uses ray tracing. And now we have a difference of over 70% in terms of FPS. So if you're gonna be doing gaming, especially with some ray tracing, in there, I mean, the difference is significant. Now, Blender also uses graphics so you can render things much faster. So here I have a difficult project open and let's go ahead and render it with the GPUs. Wow, guys, this is crazy. The M4 Pro took 49 seconds compared to a minute and 40. That is more than twice as fast, getting close to two and a half times faster, that is insane. And that shows just the compute performance and the memory bandwidth available with the M4 Pro. I mean, this is a no brainer for 3D work. Next, getting into Cinebench, I wanna do the last graphics only test. So that's gonna be just the GPU test here. And it really pushes those ray tracing cores. And along with the performance, I also want to take a look at how much power the graphics is using. So I have MX Power Gadget opened up right here. And as soon as the test actually started, you guys could see we hit 15 watts right there. 
compared to eight or so, nine, 16 watts. So we are using way more power, even though we don't have doubling of the cores. I mean, this thing might actually be clocked faster, just the cores themselves. And there we have it, 92% more performance, higher score, even though we have 60% more cores technically. So once again, very impressive. And now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on our 10 minute throttling test for the CPU. Let's get that started right there and let's see what is going on. Right away, 41 watts here compared to 23 peak that I saw. That's a lot more power starting out, almost double for the CPU. Now I'm gonna go ahead and let this run. We'll see what happens uh, when it tapers off after a little bit. And looking at the temps, well, they both are getting pretty hot pretty quick. Of course, the fans are gonna start kicking on. After a couple minutes, the M4 fan is fully maxed out. But the interesting thing is, with the M4 Pro, one of the fans isn't fully maxed out, but these fans can actually spin up faster if you guys take a look at these RPMs. That just shows that there's no more overhead, say if you're gonna add graphics to the mix on the M4, and I really wish they kept it dual fan instead of single. And the interesting thing about the M4 Pro is that right now it's keeping performance very steady after the fan spun up, and that is because we did enable that high power mode so if you're on battery, it's gonna allow it to be louder and you definitely want that if you're gonna be doing this kind of work. And now after eight minutes, let's look at the temps. We're at 36 Celsius on the uh, M4 and 37 on the M4 Pro. You guys could see where the fan, the air is coming out with dual fans compared to just that single one. All right guys, and it looks like the M4 Pro is over 46% higher performance. That is incredible. It actually finished three runs instead of two in this time. And now let's get into something a little bit easier to do. This is Figma, and this is a project brought to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California. And this is a web-based application. Let's see how smooth everything loads. Okay, very, very quick. And I'm not expecting to see a huge difference because both of them have really good single core performance, very nice and smooth. And now selecting 12 of these high resolution layers, I'm gonna go ahead and export these. The M4 took a minute and 31 seconds compared to a minute and nine. So we do have a difference, but for web-based applications, don't expect such huge gains as we saw in graphics. And now let's jump into Xcode and see what kind of difference we have. I'm gonna run my custom script here for our benchmark to make it really accurate. And wow guys, this thing flew through this 106 seconds compared to 142. That is 34% faster. And with that, the M4 Pro laptop beats out the M1 Ultra. I mean, it's just incredibly fast. And now I have the new Logic benchmark in Logic Pro opened up, and you might think that we might not have that big of a difference, but in high power mode, the M4 Pro managed 240 tracks, smashing previous computers, where the M4 got 140, actually beating out the M3 Pro. So this generation is just extreme overkill for Logic. And now I have Adobe Lightroom Classic opened up, and now we're gonna test 500 high resolution edited RAW files. Let's hit export, starter, timer, and previously I would only do 50, but the M4 Pro is getting so dang fast, insanely fast compared to previous generations, that we need to step it up. As you guys can see, our CPU is maxed out, graphics is almost maxed out, and the fans are kicking up, the systems are getting hot. This also uses a lot of RAM, so we're actually having some swap on our 16 gig M4. The M4 Pro finish, while this is just above halfway. All right guys, that took five minutes compared to nine minutes and 11 seconds, getting close to twice as fast with these large high resolution files. That is a crazy difference for the difference in price. And now getting into video editing, I'm gonna skip our regular five minute HEVC tests with film grain and LUT supplied because 
Both these systems will have such an easy time and both will take exactly two minutes to export this five minute project. I mean, look at the M4 Pro. It's literally only using 10% of the CPU and 30 to 40% of the GPU. If you're doing basic 4K editing, the M4 is just fine for that. So let's do something a bit more tough, a lot tougher actually. This is Canon 4K raw footage, 4K 60 actually. And I am shocked that even the M4 is playing this back perfectly at full resolution. With that said, the graphics is pretty much maxed out. So at any time we can drop frames. If you add one more little effect or title, it's gonna be stuttering, whereas the M4 Pro is only using about 60% of its graphics and about 40 of the CPU. And as I mentioned, the M4 is stuttering now because it heated up, the fans kicked up, it's not keeping up now. So that is where you need the M4 Pro when you start working with much tougher things or crazy multi-cams. So now let's go ahead and export this project. This should not be limited by encoders. And as you guys can see, you might be able to hear the fans are kicking up and the M4 Pro is starting to just pull ahead. All right guys, we are done. The M4 took six minutes and 28 seconds compared to four minutes and 38 seconds. That's about a 40% difference. And while the M4 was fully maxed out, the M4 Pro was not. So we actually might have been limited by encoders as 60 FPS project. So this has even more overhead. If we were to have more effects layered, the difference would actually be greater. So if you're into higher end video editing, you definitely want the M4 Pro. But for simple 4K, the M4 is just fine. And now after all of that really difficult testing, let's compare the battery life. Looking at the M4, we have 32% remaining. And for the M4 Pro, we are at 25%. And honestly guys, I was expecting a bigger difference than that. You guys saw how much more power the M4 Pro uses and that they have the same batteries. The only reason why the difference is not that great is because in a lot of these tasks, the M4 Pro just did it faster and then it could chill while the M4 is just being pushed to its limits. Um, so that is crazy. If you can get your work done, rendered 30%, 50% double as fast, well, then you're not pull, pull, pulling from the battery that hard. So that is really good news for real world battery life under heavy load. Now, of course, the M4 does have two extra efficiency cores, sucks less power. So if you're doing very basic tasks, well, in that case, the M4 will have a greater advantage in terms of battery life. So with all of that testing done, is it worth spending the extra 400 bucks on the M4 Pro? And I have to say, out of all the testing I've done over many, many years, this is probably the biggest time where you should absolutely spend the extra 400 bucks if you care about performance whatsoever. You are getting so much value for the money. I don't think Apple's ever gave us better value for the money in an upgrade as we see here. The CPU performance, the graphics performance, the extra RAM being 24 gigabytes, faster SSDs, Thunderbolt 5, I mean, the M4 Pro at 1999 is probably the best deal in a computer that money can buy today, if you care about performance that is. So there you guys have it. I would absolutely spend the extra money, uh, unless you're just gonna be going on the internet, in that case, get the M4. So thank you guys for watching. We have some killer videos right over there that you guys can check out. Subscribe, because we have a lot of other great videos. Click that circle above. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.